guys, I just want to do a quick kind of tutorial on how to adjust your aim. It's something I've been uh, using lately and it's been very helpful. And uh, this is not my idea. This is actually Morphe from slinging.org. He had mentioned this and thought it was kind of silly at first. Then I started trying it and I think it works really well. So, uh, you know, if you're consistently missing right or consistently missing left, you can try to adjust where you, how and when you let go. But I find that's a little bit more inconsistent. It's harder to time when you let go than just time and change a little bit of uh, how you think about it. So rather than say you're, you know, let's say that sign is what I'm aiming at. Say I'm missing to the right. I miss to the right. How do I adjust that to back to the left? Well, rather than trying to delay my release by a tiny amount, it's actually a little easier to think about when you start the power stroke, you know, that, that point when you really start to pull through. If you want to move it to the left, just start it a little bit later. I feel it because that's when the sling's moving a little bit slower. It's not that final, like, you know, last little bit when the sling's moving really fast, the balls are moving really fast, so timing makes such a big difference. If you can start your power stroke just a little tad bit later, it's a little bit easier to control because everything's moving slower. So a bigger change in the power stroke, or I should say a, the same kind of timing change in the power stroke will affect your shot a little bit less than uh, a release, a timing release, you know, ever at the very end. So I'm gonna try to adjust it to the, a little bit to the left by adjusting my power stroke to start just a tiny bit later. Ooh. That was a little bit too much. So, so if you're missing to the right, start your power stroke just a tiny bit later. And if you're missing to the left, start your power stroke just a little bit sooner. So I'm missing left. So I'm just gonna try to, when I start to pull through, just hit it just a tiny bit sooner. And that's, been a pretty effective way for me to adjust where I'm aiming but that's only if you're hitting consistently like if I'm just hitting hitting consistently to the right <clears throat> I'll try to just when that when that slings at a certain position try to start the power stroke if it's if I'm missing right you know say it's here and I, I miss right so I just wait till it gets to here before I start my power stroke so just that tiny little bit of angle change before you start your your kind of pull through I feel like is the, a better way to adjust your hit point then try to adjust your release at the end because your release your mechanics when you're slinging if you've been doing it for a while are pretty consistent you're always hitting the same same motion same mechanics and that release point is going to be pretty consistent it's just kind of when do you start it to get to it uh, that, that you can change and it makes it much more consistent okay so the reason I think adjusting your power stroke timing versus your release point timing is because you have more room for error with the power stroke timing than the release uh, point timing, just because uh, the move sling is moving slower at that point. So say you have a slinger here and they're slinging that way and they have a, just happens to have a very similar hairline to myself. <laughs> uh, well, here's the sling, the path the sling will take. And I think most slingers can actually reproduce a, a particular sling path quite, uh, quite well because the release point is always pretty much when you really, you know, your arm is fully extended. Most most slingers can do that, and so you know adjustments in the aiming point will be because little changing changes of where your hips are positioned or maybe where you start your release point. I mean, that can be a little bit of the release timing, <clears throat> but I think this is pretty consistent. So you know, you can aim over here, you can aim over here, but for the most part, it's pretty consistent. So if you look at uh, the timing of the two different positions, if you were to change the timing of your power stroke by 0.1 seconds when the sling's moving really slow, that distance that you change it actually ends up translating at the end to the same, the same tiny little amount. 
you know, this, this tiny little amount, you end up with that same kind of thickness. So the, the aim might, the, the aiming point will change very slightly. Whereas if you try to change the timing of your release point, that 0.1 seconds is a, a very large change in angle and you're going to get a much bigger change in where you hit if you try to adjust your um, release point time. Just because, uh, yeah, the sling's moving faster, it's changing angle faster. And so that's why I think it's more effective to try to change your um, release point or your, your power stroke timing um, because, you know, you, you change it a tiny little bit, you're not going to change, you, you change this by a little bit, this aiming point is not going to, that angle isn't huge. Um, so anyway, give that a try. See if it works for you. It seemed to work for me pretty well. I'm still kind of working out all the kinks about it. Um, but essentially, you know, where you, I, I like to think about, you know, in, a, in terms of a, a clock, where do you start your power stroke? Do you start it right at 9 o'clock, you know, 8.30? And uh, again, credit to Morphe from slinging.org because he, he put this idea in my head and I've been using it lately and I, I really like it. I think it works pretty well. Uh, anyway, give that a shot and see if it works for you.